think I think I must have been about five or six, I don't know. I don't remember. But I remember I woke up and my aunt was sitting in the room with Aunt Ruth. She was sitting in the room with me and we were in the living room on the floor. Me and Beulah. And I said, What are you doing here, Aunt Ruth? And she said, Well, she said, Your daddy your daddy's in the hospital. And I said, In the hospital? Well, Charles and Paul, my two brothers, were in their bed and they were having a pillow fight. And I went in there and I said, How can you have a pillow fight when your daddy's in the hospital? And they dropped the pillows, you know, and they were scared to death, you know. And so then um, mom came home and she was crying. And, uh, but uh, to go back and say, dad was in the store that night and it was Saturday night and he was coming home in the in the truck and he ran out of gas and he stopped and he had a lot of money with him because the banks were closed by that time and this was Saturday night. What did he do for a living? He, they owned a store, a grocery store and he was coming back from there Saturday night. He ran out of ran out of gas and so he stopped and this car came up behind him and he got out and he said he didn't think he meant any harm but he, he said I'm out of gas you know and he had a gun with him and he's talking to him and for some reason rather he shot him and so dad said my god man that's just the words he said you've killed me and I've got five children and he said he stood there for a while and he thought, well, I might as well lay down. So he laid down and he kept laying there and he, he said, I guess I'm not gonna die, so I guess I better go up and knock on this door of this house. And it happened to be that it was a customer of his. And she opened the door and she said, oh, Mr. Mayfield, what in the world? And she fainted. So the son came to the door and he saw him and he said, he said, Dad said, get Mercer's. That was the funeral home in Granite. And he knew him real well. He says, call them and tell them to come and get me. So they came and going to the hospital, there was a train across the track. And so the guy got out and unhooked the train so they could get through. And when he got there, he had very little blood. And he had a bad, uh, he had a, a odd, I don't know what it was, but it was an odd uh, blood. And so anybody just couldn't give him bread. So he called his, they called his brother and his brother came up and gave him, I forget how many pints of blood. He just didn't hardly have, have any blood. And uh, they called the church and all the, the people came there and they prayed all night for him. They were, stayed at the church all night praying for him. And uh, they didn't give him much hope because, uh, you know, it, it, it he, he, he had a, um, Barnabas was the, was the doctor and he was a Jewish man and they started cutting his underwear and, and the, the doctor says, don't do that. He says, he might need that. You unbutton it. <laughs> so, so they unbuttoned it, you know. And, um, and then they, they saw that the bullet, there was no hole, you know. And, and, and it, so it, some way or other, it, it went, let's see, it was, it was, I'm getting him and Claude mixed up. Um, his, um, it went in, but there, it, it's come out, but there was no way that it went in. Right. And so then it was all written up in the press record that, that how this man, he, the bullet some way got in without going through the, the front. The vital organs. Yeah. Right. And so it was all written in there and it was just a miracle and it, his heart, moved over an inch and a quarter to allow the bullet, the bullet to go to pass through. through. But there didn't, wasn't any hole here, but behind it, there was. So they could see the scar tissue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it went through and, and came out. And But he was in there, I don't know how long, but he was, he, um, I remember when Mom come home that night, she said, she was crying and she said, the doctor said, this is the night if he lives through tonight, he'll make it. And so everybody was praying, you know, and, um, 
and then he um, he began to get get better and uh, and then I don't know how long he was in there but like I said we took the lunch down to him you know because he wouldn't eat their their food and then the, the milk <laughs> you know they brought him this watery looking stuff and he said where's the cream off of it and they said he they said oh we give that to the Pope he says well you take this and give it to the Pope too he says I'm not gonna drink he says I'm just as good as that Pope he says I'm not gonna have I'm gonna have this cream <laughs> and so so he he um, we would take it up always milk and everything and then we were just little and we would go down there and carry the lunch down to him and uh, Beulah and I, we'd walk down and carry the lunch to him, and, and then we'd sing. They'd put us up on, lift us up on the bed. You know, they're high, and we'd lift us up on the bed, and and um, he would, we would sing to him, and that's when he'd always have a piece of gum, and he, a stick of gum, and he, that's where I always, if you'll notice, if they gave me a stick of gum, I roll it up. He says, don't ever put that in your mouth. He says, you roll that up, because you'll choke on it. So we always rolled our gum up, and then <laughs> he just taught us that. But um, he he finally came home and and got all better and went back to work again. But um, like I said, that man could have had a lot of money because he had taken all the money from and was going to put it in the bank. And uh, he said uh, he just his legs were just shaking when he went back to his. He looked at him and told me, he says, you've killed me, man. And the man was just, he didn't mean to do it, I don't think. But they never did catch the man. They never did catch the man who did it. But uh, it was all written up, and Mom had that for a long time. You know, I don't know what happened to that newspaper. She had it in a trunk. And I don't know whatever happened to it, but it was all written up in there. And Grandpa died of cancer, right? He what? How did, how did Grandpa die? Great Grandpa. He had cancer. He first had the... Uh, had, uh, let's see, first it was colon cancer, and uh, they said they got all of that. But then, I think it was five or seven years later, he got lung cancer. And um, that's why I don't think, I think when you have cancer, it's gonna go one way or the other. It always seems like they say, you know, it's not, but uh, I think it did. I think that's what it was. And he got to testify, though, over and over when they would. Oh, yeah. He testify at church, and and, uh, and he was active with the kids. He he'd take his truck, and it was a it was uh, all solid, you know. And in the back of it, he'd put benches, and then he'd pick up all the kids that wanted to go to church. And then we'd be back there. Us kids would be back there. And Paul, my older brother, there was a little space in the door, and he'd get up, and us kids would be screaming and hollering, you know, <laughs> and. And then one time, uh, uh, Paul was uh, riding in the car, nor was Charles, I think, was riding in the car, and the door came open, <laughs> and he was hanging on to it. He said, hang on, boy, he said, till I can get this thing stopped, you know. <laughs> and Charlotte, she was in the back, and the stakes came out of the, <laughs> and she fell onto the cement, you know, the highway. <laughs> we had experiences, I mean, all the time, we were, we were in this. We lived in behind the store, so that that uh, every time Dad would go into town or something, we'd say we want to go too, and he'd throw us in back of the, the the truck and take us, you know. So we were, and we'd run up and down the the streets at night, and and uh, Paul, he he went up, and there was a man. He wasn't. They called him Jack, but he wasn't right, you know. And he he liked him, and he talked to him, and he'd say. Jack, now I want to show you how I'm going to really have a waterfall here. And he'd hold that faucet down as long as he could, you know, and then he'd turn it loose and then he'd go, oh, it would go way high, you know. But we were just into everything. We'd take our, our dolls, we'd take uh, uh, our toys, and we'd play in the storefronts, you know, of downtown. That's where we would play. And skate, we liked to skate, we'd skate all over the place. But we were out quite a bit, you know, in the church. Now, when Grandpa got shot, did he, had he already lost his leg? Did he what? Had he already lost his leg? That, no, he lost his leg late. Like, How did he lose his leg? No. How did he lose his leg? He was out with a chainsaw. Oh, yeah, he was in the back, and that was when they they moved from there. The 
he was in the back in the country and he was uh, sawing trees and stuff, you know, and he forgot to put the safety lock on it and it got away from him and it started down here and went up his leg this way. And, and so uh, he had, this man that worked with him, he, he had a, a clean, brand new rope in the back of his truck and he went out and made a tourniquet, you know, and he wouldn't let mom come out. And mom says, oh yes I am, he says. He said, oh no, he said, you'll faint. He says, she said, I never fainted in my life. And she, <laughs> she went out there right with him, you know. And, um, and they took him in, but it was just a small hospital and they just took the leg and the skin that was left and just wrapped it around what was left. And um, it, it always did bother him, it always did bother him. The nerves, he said he could, Maybe it's like that, but he said, I could, I could feel every one of my toes, so I could tell you. He could feel them, the nerve, I guess, or something. But um, they called, and I was living in Minnesota at that time. Were you with me yet? Yeah, in Minnesota, and, and they called me, and, and I think it was Betty. Betty, she called and said, well, your dad's dying. Just this was the way she said, my dad's dying. And so... I said, what happened? And she said, well, mm -hmm. his heart won't take it. He, he got his leg cut off and his heart won't take it. She was, she was a liar. <laughs> and so we, <laughs> she, so then we, I, I don't know how it was. I called the schools, I think it was. And you guys were waiting out there. And I said, I'm going. And uh, so, uh, was that the time I went down with, I think Paul was there. Two. You went and got, you went and got Aunt Yeah, I went and got Beulah. Was, it was Oscar couldn't us. go. And then I got you. Guys. You guys met at the school. You came out and I picked you up at the school. I said, I'm going. I told my boss, I said, I'm going now. And so I just went to get the schools and, and I went then to, to Beulah's and Oscar kept saying, well, I don't know. I said, I'm leaving here. I said, it's seven o'clock. I'm leaving here. And I said, you can either go or not, you know. And so then I drove as far as Paul's. They were they were in um, they were in Minnesota at that time. We drove and got Paul, and he went with us. Did Den Denny went, and Kathy went, and you two. And we went down. Yeah. <laughs> And it was oh, below it. zero. It was below it was zero. Cold, I mean, it was so cold. And we were driving along, and Paul was driving at that time, and we started slipping. And we started going for this sign that was out there. You remember that? Yeah. And he said, here we go. And we just kind of just slid right down there. And he you know says, you can drive Jesus from now on. He said so. It was exactly like that. Was, yeah. We just sat there. Yeah. We off the road, and he said, well, okay. Here yep. Yeah. It just it just you could see you could see there was a sign out there and we were gonna hit that, but we were just sliding like that, you know. So then he says he said, Sis, you drive from now on. He said oh. so it was my car, so so we drove and we got to the hospital and and uh, they let us go in but they wouldn't let the kids go in. So Paul said to Denny, he says, Take this glass of water to grandpa. So he started down there, and she said, well, if he can go, I can too. And so she just started off down the hospital too. She says, that's my grandpa, and I'm going to see him too. So they all went, and all the kids went. Well, the nurses came in and made him get out, you know. So then they went outside by his window, and they was all standing outside by his window. I bet they were glad when we left. <laughs> but he, um, he he's... He's had something all the time. I mean, he just seems like everything was happening to him, but he had such faith that he just would take it. You know, he would just, I don't know, he was a strong person. And um, then when he had this, I guess when it was his, you know, he had a, his lungs, we drove there, and that was also, a, remember that was a, uh, he had a blizzard. He was always we had a blizzard, and we were going down there, and he was supposed to be operated, I think, on that, that night or something, and he he wouldn't go to sleep. They kept giving him stuff, and he says, no, not till my family gets here. He says, that's all, that's, that's all my family that's on their way. 
And they said, well, you they probably pulled off the road. We said, no, they didn't do that. They wouldn't do that. They know I'm waiting for them, them here. <laughs> so we, we didn't go up there. We went in the hospital, but we went on and got a motel uh, right across the street. And so then we came in in the morning, and I could hear him talking. And we went in there. And, she, and the nurse said, uh, where were you? She said, we were up with him all night. He would not go to sleep because he was afraid that you you were hurt, you, something happened to you. And I said, well, we were right across the street. She said, if I'd have known that, I'd have walked over there. She <laughs> said, she said he, and I could hear him and he said, get in here, like that. He says, where were you? And I said, well, we didn't think you were, we thought you were asleep. And, and he says, I didn't sleep all night, like oh. that, you know. And so then they finally went in there and, and and they um, they operated on him, but when they operated for the colon cancer, they told us they got all of it. But when they operated for the lungs, they said they, they couldn't get it all. And I said, why didn't you take the whole lung or something like that, you know? And they they said, well, you can't do that, you know. But anyway, I said, well, how long has he got? He says about seven years. Well, he lived. 10 years or more, more and like that after that. But he, he was a strong person. But that's my dad. You told me a couple stories. They were kind of short, but something about in the Great Depression, how they were making money with the bananas and... Oh, yeah. Everybody else wasn't having any... They had the store in that, but, but he, he just... Not only that, but he carried the whole church. They, we had boxes like this and little bitty tablets all the way through, and they put it on the account, you know. And so when they, they had, they had I don't know how many of those boxes that he just kept the whole church, you know, by letting them have the food, but then they didn't pay. And when they would get cash or something, they'd go to one of the other stores and get cash rather than coming and giving the cash to him, you know. And, uh, but he just tore all the books up and let them go. And, uh, but he, he always seemed to be able to make a job when there wasn't any job. He never, he had five kids and, and he didn't take any of the, you know, they gave us something, I don't know what it was, but, but he worked. In, Welfare. Yeah, they, he never, and all the rest of them, they, it was bad, it was depression. Stock it, and he called it the store at your door. It was Mayfield's store at your door. So he'd go to the houses, and it had in the front that was built over it. There was a refrigeration up there where he had meat, and then he had all the different canned goods and cakes and pies and everything you could think of, and that's where he would he made the living. And um, Paul worked with him some. And then he had a couple of schoolboys that would help come and stock the shelves and stuff for him. But that's the way it was. And then Charles, Paul and Charles, uh, he took him out there one time and he said, Charles, see that says Mayfields? He said, you see that S there? He said, for Mayfields? He says, that's me. He says, I'm the son. He says, you see that apostrophe? That's you. <laughs> so Charles was yeah. I can't think of any stories. Well, there was the other one you told me is what they, what happened. Um, I think it was like Pearl Harbor. You, you, I'd asked you because we were in class, and then you were saying you remembered you were in the room when the radio came on, and both of them, you know, I don't remember who it was, but it was your, your dad and someone else like looked at each other and they said this means we work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were out we were out at their house. Uh, I think see I was married and, and Paul and Paul was married and Charlotte was married. Charles wasn't married and I really wasn't married. But that we were out there on a Sunday and they had the radio on 
and it came on that they had hit Pearl Harbor. And Dad said, that means war, you know. And he just looked around like, this is the last time we're going to all be together. Because Paul went in and he was in the infantry. And uh, he wouldn't talk about it, but he actually slept in German blood. Mm. They didn't get any replacements, no replacements. And they'd go in in the morning and they'd see all these ones that were had been killed and you know it was hard and he wouldn't he would couldn't even talk about it. He said he went for for months without a bath or anything. Mm -hmm. He was an African. Mm -hmm. He was he was an African. Yeah. The first yeah. He um and then he uh, lost uh, three inches of his arm. He was hit in three inches of his arm and he had this test and it was like this, you know. Every time he'd come home Grandma would pile pillows because <laughs> she thought he was holding it up himself. You know? <laughs> and he'd say, I can't feel that, Grandma. She says, I can't stand to see you holding your hand up like that. And she'd pile it all full of pillows, mm -hmm. you know. But um, he, he was in there. He didn't get to come home or I don't know how long. But um, it happened every time that I, w I would sleep and I would dream and I'd be a nurse. And I'd be out with all these soldiers laying on the ground, you know, and I'd turn them over, and I came up on Paul, you know. I did the same thing with Claude, you know. And uh, John was in the Coast Guards. And I, I didn't dream about him, but I did about Paul, and, and I'd see that. And, and I, uh, I got up, I had this dream this one night, and I got up, and I, I was at Mom and Dad's. And uh, Claude was overseas, and I just knew something happened. And I got up in the morning, and I, I went into this little room, and I, I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, you know. And I got up in the morning, and I said, Mama, I said, something's happened to Claude. I said, she says, no, you're just upset. I said, no, you mark this date. I said, you mark this date. And I got letters up to that date. And then I was working with Dad in the store, and the postman come in, and he had a telegram. And uh, he said, where is your dad? And I said, what have you got? And he says, where is your dad? And I said, Daddy. And he come up and he gave it to him. And I was climbing up on Dad. I, just, I was just climbing up on him, and there was customers all over the place. And I said, what is it, Dad? He says, it's, it's a telegram. And I said, is he dead? I said, no, he's not dead, but he's wounded. And I said, pray then. And on all those customers around, and Dad got right down on his knees right in the store, and he prayed, you know. And then he said, now, you go back in the back. And I said, we got to do something. We've got to do something. And I didn't hear and didn't hear and didn't hear. And we went to the Red Cross. We did everything we could, but we couldn't get any news about him. All I knew was what he was wounded. And the only thing came to me is, God, I don't care what it is, but please don't let him be blind. I don't know why I did, but that one thing, I said, don't, if it's, if it's some, or, some organ or some, I said, that's all right. But I said, please don't let him be blind. That's the only thing I could think of. And the first I heard, I got a letter from him. And it was just real, real, you could see he's, he was, he said, it hurts to write this, but he says, I had the same experience as your dad had. He said uh, he was out. He was out in uh, can't even think where it was now. But anyway, there was some soldiers and him out talking. They were just talking, and he said he was hit right there. And he said I, I looked down, and he said I just there was blood just pouring, and I said I fell to the floor, mm. and I said, if you'll just take me back to my loved ones, he says, I'll serve you the rest of my life. And uh, and he, uh, he said they got him on an old truck, like a bed, and he said they had to take him into the, wherever they take him. And he said, I, it was just bumping all over the place. He said, it hurts so bad, you know. He told me this later, he said, but he said, I, I never lost consciousness, but I got in there. But he said it, it, it was bad. They didn't expect him to, to live. 
and he said it, it hurts to write this letter even. He said, I'm not that well yet, you know. So then he, um, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything, never did hear from the, from the Red Cross, never did. Never heard from anybody, but I heard from him. And then I was going to go there, but then they sent him back on a boat, big ship or boat or whatever it is. And he said, when they got close to, the to home, he said, all the soldiers ran to one side of that boat. And he said it was starting to tip. Mm, and so he, he, they, he was laying on a bed, you know. And so they took all those on a bed and they pushed them over to the other side to straighten the boat up, you know. Or it could have just, they were just so glad to see home they didn't think. Mm -hmm. You know, they just ran over. <laughs> but um, he, uh, he went then, I think, I think they took him to Texas. And I was going to go down there, but he wrote, said, no, don't do it. So, what's the matter? Am I forgetting something? <laughs> Put that on there. Huh? Put that on there. What? Well, Daddy told me that he was on this troop ship headed back and they approached New York Harbor. And he says, you hear on the news this story all the time. It was the QE2. He says, you hear the story all the time about how all the soldiers ran to the side to see the Statue of Liberty? No. <laughs> it was a barge with the girls from the USO. <laughs> all the, all the women. <laughs> and all the guys ran the look. And, yeah, just about drowned. They, said they, they almost did. capsized. They almost oh, capsized. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Because they just, you know, everybody ran into one side. And they're helpless, laying and on he's the bed. Like, Lord, you brought me all this way. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, you know, and I'm going to drown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. It, it wasn't too long, and then he got to... He got to come home. We didn't tell him what happened to the bullet. Why he wasn't dead. Well, yeah, um, it, it was that the, bu the bullet went, he had, when they take you over there, they give you a little testament, and then he had a cell celluloid, I guess you call it, his, all of his papers in there. So he had that, and he had uh, uh, his, his, it was in his pocket, the Bible. They give you a little testament. So he had that in his, and it hit that, and it turned it, the force of it turned the bullet a quarter of an inch, and it, it, you could see the bullet, he sent it back to me, and, uh, and it went through all of his organs, it touched his liver, because he had uh, yellow jaundice, and he was as yellow as a pumpkin, they said, and it went all the way through here. And it landed right here. It didn't come out. It landed right there, and they they took it out. So then he wasn't he wasn't uh, he wasn't healing. It was draining. Even when he came home, just for that little bit, it it was draining, and it wouldn't heal. So when they went back, they went through it, and he had little pieces of the Bible all in there. Oh wow! And little pieces of it, and it'd say love or peace or something, you know, and. And this old doctor says, I've heard of people having the Word of God in them, but never like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, after they got that out, then he healed up. But you could always see he liked to play baseball, and they had a baseball team on the church. And that's when she was just a baby, and I'd have her in a, a, a buggy, and we'd go out there. And one time the ball hit him here, and he went to the ground, and boy, I took off. I didn't care who was there. I took off. I said to whoever was there, watch my baby. And I took off up there, and he said, I'm all right, I'm all right. And I always said, you ought to wear a guard over it, but he never did. You could always see his heart pump through it, just a little thing because over it. Because it was so yeah, thin. Yeah, and, and it, you could see his, his heart bump, and it always worried me when he'd play ball, or he bowled a lot and stuff like that, you know. And, yeah, but he, he, uh, he healed up, and then it, it was, he was just fine then. He didn't have any trouble, and I, I think to this day, he's best of health. He doesn't have any any blood pressure or anything like that. He just has Alzheimer's. He right. doesn't know. He doesn't know. Colonel Madison's really been praying a lot. She really is, is wanting to get baptized. Can you tell me a story about when you got baptized? When I got baptized mm -hmm. the first time? 
first, second, whatever. <laughs> I don't. I didn't know there was more than one. Well, I was baptized the first time because it was it was Trinity, mm -hmm. and then when I went to the church, I was baptized. Uh, you know, with the Lord Jesus Christ and God. And uh, in the Minnesota River, in August. huh? In the Minnesota River in August, and they had to take the oh, scum off the Oh, it was just the awful. There, there, there was there was scum, <laughs> scum on it, and we went. <laughs> It was, it was green scum, and, <laughs> and there was a bunch of kids over on the other side, and they were laughing at us. They was laughing at us. It was me and her and Charlene, or where is she? She's got the baby. Yeah, and they were on the other side, and we, we were waded out to that. You know, we got <laughs> pushed to the side and went out there, and it was August, and that's when they have, it just, it's just ishy up there in August. <laughs> But uh, we were. So you were all three baptized together, or? Uh huh. Yeah. At the same time. All three of us. Yeah. It's and then what got you to Indiana? Dad, dad, and mom. They came up there. <laughs> <laughs> we got to oh, yeah. <laughs> get both sides of this story. <laughs> well, we when when well, school, I've heard what really got when you school was out for her. She was in the school program, and they uh, were supposed to get you a job, you know. And there wasn't any in Montevideo at that. Now there is. There's more. It's built up more. But then, when you graduated, everybody went to the cities. Well, I wasn't about to have a young girl go to the cities, 140 miles by herself, and that place there is just full of homosexuals. And there was no way I was going to let her go. To out there so she said she she said well she said how about trying Louisville because mother and dad were living in down here so she they, they called Louisville and they said send that girl to us yesterday because she was in a small office she knew all the and she they wondered her right now so that was hard <laughs> that was hard you know but I, I didn't know what else to do and so um, we went, and I've got pictures of it yet where she's getting on this plane. <laughs> and Dad, I, well, I called Dad first, and I said, Dad, how would you like to have Claudine come down there? He says, don't be fooling around with me. He says, I don't want to hear that. He says, D what are you calling for? I said, she, I want to know if you would like to have Claudine come down there. Well, of course, she said. He said, you know I would. <laughs> and, and he said, uh, uh, what's why why you know and I I said well you know she had to have a work and that's, so we went down there and it, it was just God's way of getting us there you know but then boy when we had to set the table for just the two of us and Charlene was not a talker she still isn't you know but we would be talking and she'd come in the room and she just turn around and she'd have tears in her eyes and she'd walk out and she said she said you don't want me here you you're talking about me or something like that I couldn't she was just well she had a hard time after her dad left she had a hard time and uh, she always felt it was her fault because of her name because he married us Charlene and she just always felt I don't know like it was her fault and it wasn't her fault but um, uh, she had the same trouble then when she, when she started, when she graduated, we had the same trouble, you know. And um, am I talking too much? No. <laughs> and so when she, when she graduated, I thought, well, what are we going to do now, you know. And uh, she couldn't get a job. She was working through the school program. She was working in a dentist's office, but they didn't want full-time help. So, so I, I, I didn't know what to do. And so we flew down here. It was on a Christmas, I think. And we flew down here, and I put applications in everywhere uh, for the electric company, but there was no openings. Even Brother Jackson went to court and put one in for me, you know. But it just, just didn't work. And. Uh, so then I went back and I was so sick when I got off that plane, I never could ride on a plane. I, I just, I just was sick. I couldn't even ride in a, a car at that time. 
and so then um, we, we came back and I got I came in the house and I was so sick I just dropped the suitcase and I went and I just flopped across the bed when I flopped across the bed it said September 1st I kept saying September 1st and I said what September 1st and I got up and I said Charlene do you think we could be ready to leave September 1st she says mom I knew we were supposed to leave but I had to wait for the Lord to show you <laughs> that's just what she said so I says well I'll go in and I'll talk to the boss I went in the next day and two of the other guys were leaving two of the other bookkeepers I said well there's no way I can telephone rings well have you told him <laughs> Charlene I said Charlene I can't I said Bill and I forget the other name they're they're leaving she said, well, are you going to obey God or are you going to obey man? You know her, she just... <laughs> so I said, well, I, I don't know what to do. And she says, well, you got, that's your, that's your, that's your place to, you know, one, you're going to have to do one or the other. So my boss come walking into the, into the front of the office there. Yes! Get out. <laughs> and, um. And I said, Mr. Lake, I said, would you be mad at me if I told you I was going to leave? He said, I knew as soon as Charlene or Claudine left that death was going to be long that you'd be going. And I said, well, I just, he says, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I, I, I'm sure. And so then he just walked out. So then he was trying to get different ones in there and everything. And, and I said, while we were gone, my Charlene, or I called down there and told Dad, and he said, he got, he went and looked for a trailer with her. And they picked out a new trailer and had it moved there and everything. And so then, so then I, I, uh, I, I, while I was at work, she would put price tags on all the furniture that we couldn't take with us because it was gonna cost me quite a bit to go down there. And I didn't know, well, by set, she took our, our, I guess, the dining room. I don't know all of the stuff that we didn't say. Books upon books, because we had so many books. And they're the, they charge you by weight in their head. So by the time we got ready to go, we had plenty of money to pay for it all. And I sent them a check down for the, and Dad went and got this on his name. Mm -hmm. And just told him I was coming down here and I was a good worker and I was, had a job and I was going to, you know, and I didn't have a job. I went through an agency, and I, I couldn't get what I wanted. And I'd rather have worked at the where I was at. And and I worked in the office there, but I, it wasn't ever a job that I really liked. But I, I did okay. And and uh, then that night we came when we got in. I don't know how come you were. Were you there? No, you. They were having a convention. <laughs> Probably out the with real him. true reason that she moved. I called down here and filed on. I was dating this Catholic boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I called down, and every time I'd call down, she was gone. But they wouldn't tell me where. <laughs> Finally, I said, "Where is she?" And Dad says, "Well, now she's out with somebody." And I says, "What church does he go to?" And he, she said. Well, now, listen now, I've already talked to him. Now, everything's okay. And I said, what church does he go to? He's a Catholic. A Catholic, she said. I said, you mean that I sent her down there and you let her go with a Catholic? I went in the next day and I said, we're going down there. Before we came down. We came down and I mean, I was madder than a hornet. And I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even go out and see him. Nope. So what happened when you first saw him? Huh? What happened when you first saw him? What was your reaction to him? I think it was a church, wasn't it? I don't remember. <laughs> but I don't know. I remember, but I'm not saying. Huh? <laughs> I don't. I don't remember when I first saw him. Anyway, I I didn't go out that time. <laughs> and so then he he kept coming to church and. And Charles was concerned. He was really concerned too. And so then, that one time he went up and he, he went to the altar, and I said, "Welcome to the family." It's like that. Uh, but I oh I was I was mad. 
<laughs> and I thought, what in the world? <laughs> Dad says, I've talked to him now. Don't you worry about it. And I guess he was just going to that church because his dad went there or something. I don't know. But <laughs> I think that's How did you meet Grandpa? Church. Oh. Our Grandpa Creek. Oh, Grandpa Creech? Grandpa. Well, he was, he, when we came down to the church, he was already there. He was a deacon in the church. And he'd been the deacon at church for a long, long, long time. And then after his wife died, why then Patty, Patty started on us, on him. And she said, she said, uh, Dad, you better, better get a hold of her. Somebody will get her. And then she'd come to me and she said, she said, uh, Eleanor, she says, Dad likes sweets so much. She said, would you make him a pie once in a while? I said, I would not. <laughs> I said, what's the matter with you? I said, you know, you know, you the way to a man's heart through his stomach. You think I'm going to give him a pie? And so I said, but I'll ask the girls to. So I to ask them if they'd bake some cookies or something for him. But, but uh, I wasn't about, about. And so then... He came, he came off the, I was playing the piano and he was leading singing. He comes off of the platform, over to the piano. Will you go out to dinner with me today? And I said, I got my mom with me. And he says, that's okay, bring her too. So it started like that, you know, and I, so then I thought, uh-uh, this ain't, this ain't for me. So I told him, he asked me if I'd go riding with him or something, and I said, but I've got to talk to you. He took a pain pill that night, a <laughs> nerve pill that night. And I told him the story. I said, there's nothing wrong with you. But I said, as much as I love my husband, and I said, he was unfaithful to me. And not only that, but he lied to me. I said, there's no way that I could ever trust another man. Never. I said, if I couldn't trust him, there's no way I could ever trust another man. And he said, well, once in a while, will you go out and have coffee with me? I said, if you understand what I'm talking about, I'll go have coffee with you sometime. But I said, don't ever think anything more because I said I can't I couldn't trust anybody and so it wasn't he kept going and kept going and I could see where he really was he wasn't that type of a man and so but I I, I didn't think I didn't think God was either you know I, I just and he said I made it easy, easy for him because I believed everything he told me and I said aren't you supposed to you know and so he told us to go take a vacation and at mom's when school was out. And while I was up there is when he married. And he tricked me into the signing papers by saying he'd come back. And so I, I, I just, there was, and, and it seemed like when I was at work, it was always the married men that would come to me, always. And I thought, are there no good marriages? You know, I just, just couldn't believe it. I don't think you want this on here. You're fine. And he, <laughs> I didn't mean to put that on. I forgot about that. <laughs> I can delete. This one a big deal. You're just, fine. Anyway, this one I took. I said he came by and got me, and we went out. And I said we parked someplace, and I started to tell him. I told him they thought I was a widow. A lot of them in the church thought I was a widow. You know, from the war. And so I told him, I said, there's nothing wrong with you. I think you're a good man. But I said, I don't, I don't trust, I don't trust men. And I said, there's no sense in even going on with this if you can't trust them. And he just kept coming and, and I could see that he was a, a good man, you know. So finally, we weren't married one month till he called me at work one day. And he was stuttering and stammering around. And I thought, I said, what's the matter? He says, I, 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 and this way is what I, 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 and I said, what's the matter? And he said, I'd rather take a beating than tell you this. And I says, what? And he said, my boss wants me to go out of town with him tonight. And so I'll be late tonight. And I said, okay, I'll see you when you get home. And I, I never, nothing ever, it didn't, it didn't phase me, but I'd heard that so much, I'll be late tonight, I'll be late tonight, but it didn't phase me, I just didn't, he just I don't know why, him. and I heard the car drive up, and I heard him open the door, and he grabbed me, he says, I've heard you have, and I tears was just a rolling down his cheeks, 
have hurt you, haven't I? I said, no. I said, you just proved to me that I can trust you. I said, I didn't even think a thing about it. I didn't either. And I just, I just knew he wasn't that way. You know, he just, I don't know. Of course, how did, I, I believed him too. How did he propose to you? Oh, <laughs> get down from here. He was, he was, um, how was it? He was, he was at his, his place there, and we were sitting around there, and he was walking around, he acted like a nervous, and he said, he said, uh, I don't know how we got to it, but he was stammering around, and finally I said, what's the matter with you? You know, <laughs> just sit stuttering so around. Well, well, you. Dup, 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 you know. <laughs> I said, what's the matter with you? He said, well, I, I want to know if you'll marry me. I said, why should I? Just like that. He says, come on now. I said, why? Why are you asking me? You want somebody to wash your clothes and clean your house? He said, no. He said, I love you. Oh, no, he wouldn't say it. He said, I, 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 I just want to marry you. <laughs> and I said, well, there has to be more than that. And then he, he told me that he, he loved me, you know. And, but he was the hardest person to get to say anything like that. He just... He says, if you can't see it on me, why do I have to say it? I says, well, it means more if you can say it. Was that the first it. time he ever said that to you? Yeah. When he asked you, Miriam. Yeah, he, 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 would, he would show by his actions that he cared for me, but he couldn't put it in words. And I made him put it in words, you know. <laughs> because I'm not, I said, I'm not going to just marry you because you want somebody to keep your house for you, you know. No, 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 that's not it, you know. <laughs> And then Patty, she was after him all the time. She just, I don't know why. She thought she was going to have to keep him. She thought that finally she'd be the one that, you know. And I, and I told her that. I said, I don't know why you was pushing him at me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I said, oh, yes, 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 you know. <laughs> but she, she did. She was, she was looking at, out for herself, you know. So what were some of your favorite memories about Grandpa? What's some of the, your favorite memories? About who? About Grandpa Creech. Grandpa Creech? Yeah, just what do you remember about him? What are your fondest memories? Oh, I got a lot of fond memories, but I'm not going well, to Well, the tell ones you. That, that are PG! <laughs> PG! All righty then. Wow. <laughs> I am yes, not going to that on camera. That is your great grandma. <laughs> No, what he, did, what did he was the most honest man. Here we go, Tanner. The this most honest name. man I've ever known in my life. To his own hurt. To his own hurt. He was the type of person that, I guess if it wasn't for my brother and my dad, they were kind of forceful. I might have, but it didn't bother me. But it did other people. Because it'd come out, you know, fast. But that's the way my dad was, and that's the way Charles was. So that didn't bother me. But he was, he was so honest, and I guess that's what it was. It was just that, that and he was a bit very devoted Christian, very devoted Christian. He didn't live a false life, whatever he believed. That's what he lived. And I guess he that's... He was so good with you boys. Oh, he loved them boys. The boys didn't have a grandpa. I know. Yeah. On our side. Yeah. And he, he loved just, them. He just... Yeah, and, that, and the one thing I hate, uh, Garrett was the oldest one. Garrett, he was with Garrett a lot, you know. And he thought a lot of Garrett. And then when uh, uh, they moved out there, Daryl and and um, Fisher moved out there, he was with Caleb a lot. And Caleb loved him. And I've got, she just, and the, la the one thing I regret there at the last when he was so weak, he would ask me every day, you know, wonder how Caleb's doing without me. And it was his way of asking to see him, but I didn't catch it that way. You know, I thought it would be too much for him. And so did they. And he would be sitting in his chair, and it had this thing that come up, you know, and he'd have to see it. And he'd climb underneath there, where there was an opening, and he'd climb up. And he'd take him when he was cutting the grass. You've got pictures of where he's, yeah. yeah. And he just, he just really loved kids. But he wanted them to mind, and that's what people didn't understand. Oh, he'd get your ear. Not not your ear so much, but he pat pat you on the back, <laughs> and that little Corey, you know, um, Carol Johnson's boy, you know, 
he was, he was a mean little kid in church. And his mom would bring him back to him all the time for him to take care of. And I used to hate that. I said, now wait a minute. I said, don't make him always be the mean guy. You know, the one that has to do all the correcting. I said, you know, get somebody else to do it. But they'd always bring him back to him. And uh, Brother Ellen told us last night in church, he says, I remember he was talking about making your children behave, you know. But he says, not like they're doing now. They're beating them and killing them and everything. But he says, you can show affection to your kids and correct them without doing that. And he said, there was a little boy, and he told about this little boy, and his mama couldn't do anything with him, so he took him back to, he said, go to preach. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said he wouldn't, wouldn't mind, so he gave him a couple little paddles on the back, you know. And he said, uh, he says, I'm going to tell my mom, and he didn't care whether he told his mom or not. <laughs> she dragged him back there for him to take care of. So he'd gone into the restroom the other night, and he was, he'd always say something to the kids uh, back there. And he says, oh, I know who you are. He said, you're the one that paddled me, you know. And he said, but I love you. Just like that, he climbed on his lap, you know, and he said, but I love him. And he did. He made a good life of himself, and he's a lawyer, or he's going to college, and he's getting really good grades and everything, a really good boy. And he came and asked me for a picture after he died. He said, would you give me a picture? And I gave him a picture. And she said, he don't go anywhere that he doesn't take a picture of him. So it, it was... It was right for him to do it. Oh. She didn't. Her husband wasn't. Mm -mm. I don't think she. I don't think she. She wasn't. She didn't have one. Mm -mm. But um, I guess I've talked enough. I? If there's one thing you think Grandpa would want his great grandkids that he hasn't got to see, if there's one thing he'd want to tell them, what do you think that would be? That he loved them. He didn't put them on their knees. He loved them. Mm -hmm. He, he instructed him. You know, he wasn't. He loved kids. He really loved kids, and his own grandkids weren't around. And so he took mine, and 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 and, and, he, and they were jealous of it. They were so jealous of it. And and I told him, I said, well, if you bring yours around, he'd love them just as much. But they didn't. And he, there were, he said, I've got grand, great grandkids that I don't even have never seen, you know. And and he, he just, he went to my family, you boys. He thought so much of all of you. You know, he just really, he's got that picture of you in there where he's showing you something in the, in the you were grinding something, you know. And, and he just, I don't know, he just really, he really loved you boys. And, and I think he always wanted his own to be like that, close to him, but, but they weren't, you know. And at his funeral, one of the boys said, different ones, you got up and talked about him, and the different ones from the kids at church talked about him. And he said to Ruth Ann, I forget what his name is, either. he says, I didn't really know my grandpa, did I? She said, no, you didn't, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what he desired. And so he couldn't have his own, but he, Went to you guys. Mm -hmm. He was a good man. And I miss him so much. You just, this is, you know, you, you try to get by, but it's always there. You know, anybody, nobody knows until they do it. Go through mm -hmm. themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. But it just, a lot of times they say, why did you leave me in this mess, you know, <laughs> things I can't do. I can't do the things that I used to do, and it needs to be done. And, and I I just do what I can, but it worries me, because I don't like to see things go to pieces, you know. And, uh, but you can just do what you can, and that's all.